Hi there, my name is uh, Tarja Haukos and uh, I have a few things I want to tell you about Python. Uh, I want to tell you those things so that you can run the scripts uh, posted on my website, namely terje.civil.ubc.ca and I will get back to this website here to download uh, scripts from it in a moment. Uh, I'll close it for now as I have a couple of other things to tell you. The first is that there are different ways to run Python code. Uh, one is Jupyter, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, is one way. It's not the way that I'm going to uh, suggest uh, uh, for running the code that I posted, but you can certainly get back to it here and notice how beautiful it is when you can set up equations, text and code uh, side by side, or at least on top of each other, to create these uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, not the way I'm going to do it here. What I'm going to do is to suggest you download two things. First of all, Python. So if I click on Python, excuse me, on downloads here on the Python page, uh, I make the point that it's Python 3 that we're using. In this case, uh, Python 3.7.3 is the uh, most recent version, but Python 3 is what you need, not Python 2. In addition to that engine to run the code, uh, we need some um, integrated developer environment to work with, and the one that I prefer in this tutorial is uh, PyCharm. When you click download in PyCharm, you're going to have a couple of options, the professional version and the community version. The community version is what I suggest. It certainly is sufficient to run the code that I posted, uh, and it is free, which is another advantage. Uh, now, closing that window as well, there's not much left on my screen uh, other than this website, where I will click on the reliability page to find some code. Uh, in addition, I have on my screen uh, PyCharm open, and hopefully this dialog box for PyCharm is what you will see when you um, open PyCharm for the first time. So hopefully we all got to this point here and I will do this. I will now create a new uh, project. I'll call it the test uh, project. I think I'll have to call it five because I've done a few test projects in my past. Um, so pick whatever you, uh, name you want, but hopefully you then end up with this you would say, user interface for PyCharm in which we will create Python code. So what I'll do now, I'll right click on the project name and I'll select new Python file, not a regular file, but a Python file. And I'm going to call this uh, test file. So okay, that's whatever name you put on. Maybe some other name that describes the algorithm in it. It's going to be more descriptive, but that's what I want. Um, I'm going to go back to the page where I have posted notes and examples and code and here at the very bottom I see a 1D optimization analysis that I thought would be a good idea to start with. So here's the Python code. If I scroll to the bottom I find a button where I can click to see the raw code uh, which is just easier for me to mark and then copy to my clipboard I just did on my computer back to PyCharm, I can then paste it, and there you go, there's the code sitting right here. This code uses some functions, like the golden section line search, that I've implemented and posted elsewhere on the website. What I've done is uh, that I've uh, sort of created function, functions that, that I keep in a file, not created yet, we have to do that now, but I've given it this name Terrius functions, where I'm going to store all the functions, well in this case it's just going to be one because, let's face it, I just want to go do the golden section search this time uh, but again I will typically put all my functions in one file that I import with a syntax that you see right here. So why don't we do the following, I'm going to right click here and create a new uh, Python file that I call Terrius functions, got to be careful with that name there and here I want to put functions or in this case just one namely the golden section search. Do I find it? Let's go back to the website and see here. There it is, golden section line search. Yep, another snippet of uh, Python code sitting on this website. I scroll to the bottom so I can click on um, getting the raw view of the code. I copy it to my clipboard and I paste it back here in my PyCharm editor. And there we go. Everything should be fine. Or what? Maybe not. Because although... Um, I now have Terrius functions not lighting up in red anymore because I've indeed created the file. There are items, or should we say other packages that I'm using over in this golden section line search code 
such as plotting and doing other numerical stuff. And here comes a point I'd like to emphasize to you, so pay attention to this one. I'll go back to my website and I'll click on the basics page. And indeed, I'm going to open the programming document. I'm not going to read every word here, but I want to scroll down into this getting started section where it says that for many of the functions that you keep in that file that I'm now calling Eterius functions, you need to import other libraries. This little snippet of code here is important to notice. So I'm going to go back into that Terius functions file. In fact, I'll go at the very bottom, or it doesn't really matter exactly where I put this, but there it comes. In fact, you know what? I'm not going to need the scientific library, so I'm just going to take that out now, but normally, or at least very often, you need, you need all of this. So here we go. We have a new problem on our hands because we have red lines underneath the numerical pi library as well as the matplotlib uh, library. How do we address that? In PyCharm, you do the following to install these packages. You go to Preferences, or should, is it Settings in Windows? Not sure. This is a Mac. Then you get this dialog box where I click on the project and the project interpreter. And here is not much. I have say, it said here that Python 3 is what I want to use as my, should we say, compiler, or at least uh, running the code. Uh, but what I need to see in this list uh, is libraries like numerical pi, like pi, uh, excuse me, like uh, matplotlib. Click on the plus sign here at the bottom to install these packages. So here we go. These steps are important. Matplotlib, uh, uh, is that something I can import? Yes, indeed. I found it right here. I'm going to click on install package. I don't know if you see the bottom of my, of my screen, but I can see that this is about to be installed. While that is installing, I'll look for the other one, the numerical pi library. Yes, indeed, here's another one that I can install, so let's do that, install package. As I clicked on that, I saw that the, the matplotlib uh, was installed successfully, and there we go, same with the last library, as you can see here at the bottom. So I'm done with that, and I close that dialog box that had to do with the, with the settings. Uh, I go back to the code that I want to run here now, and see if I can right click somewhere within this file. Let me see, I need a little bit more time here so that uh, the PyCharm gets to, to understand that I install packages and make sure to, that they are available to me. And I click on run test file. Let's see what happens next here. It takes a little while, but here's the golden section search doing an optimization for exactly the um, objective function that I have uh, given in this uh, file. So that was my little uh, intro, my little um, um, example of how to run Python code. Uh, please come to my lectures for more information. Look in that programming document and have fun download, downloading those Python um, scripts that I posted. See you next time.